Stockholm Central Station is Sweden's largest and busiest hub for rail travel. With every step, these people generate body heat. While the Swedes are tired of letting it all go to waste, they found a novel way to use the station to help a company get on top of soaring energy costs. Every person generates 100 watts of body heat, and as every commuter knows, that adds up in confined spaces. Well, here at Stockholm Central Station, thousands of commuters pass through every day. So where does their body heat go? Using body heat to warm a building is not a new concept, but engineers at a property company in Stockholm have taken the idea one step further. They've figured out a way to harness the body heat from commuters passing through Stockholm Central Station to heat an office block that's across the road. Klaus Johansson is one of the creators of the system. This is old technology done in a new way. Uh, heat exchangers have been around for a hundred years and all we did was add, add heat exchangers to the cooling machines, something that is usually done in a lot of buildings to shift uh, energy between different parts of buildings. Uh, the only difference that we have done here is that we, shifted, that we shift energy between two different buildings. There are about 250,000 people a day that passes through the Stockholm Central Station. Uh, they in themselves generate a, a bit of heat, but they also do a lot of activities. They buy food, they buy drinks, they buy a newspaper, they buy a book. This energy generates a, an enormous amount of heat in the central station. Why, why shouldn't we use the excess heat from the central station? It's there. If we don't use it, it's just going to be ventilated away to no avail. So how does the system work in practice? Heat exchangers in the station's ventilation system converts the body heat into hot water. That is pumped to the heating system in the nearby building to keep it warm. Not only is the system environmentally friendly, but it lowers the energy costs of the office block by as much as 25%. We save money uh, in, the, in running the building, so the building becomes worth more. It's generally good business. We're quite surprised that people haven't done this before. I'll save about 25% of uh, the heating need for, for the building. And uh, in a large scale project like this, that means a lot of money. I <laughs> have to have some business secrets, don't we? <laughs> Over the next 40 years, most experts agree that the supply of oil and gas will become less abundant. There will be strong competition and higher prices for the resources that remain. Given the abundance of human body heat worldwide and the growing need for renewable energy, is this Swedish idea going to catch on? We, we, we see similar sorts of energy recovery systems all over the world, but usually confined to single buildings. People are starting to think about urban heat distribution networks everywhere, but the financial cost and the benefit will depend really very much on the climate and the pricing of energy in the particular country. Dockholm Central Station is a great idea. It works really well in Sweden because they've got very low winter temperatures, which means that even a low-grade waste heat source like body heat can be used advantageously. And of course, they've got very high gas prices, so it's worth spending a little bit of money on electricity to move heat from building to building rather than spending a lot on heating with gas. And what about Swedish commuters in the station? Will they be the ones left out in the cold? The commuters won't, won't get chilled because of this, because we don't steal energy from, from the central station. We use excess heat that was already there before. So with its freezing winters, green credentials and high energy costs, Sweden takes a creative approach to heating. To stay warm, all they need to do is to keep the heat on. And if Central Station stays busy, then for one building at least, it is well on the road to a low carbon and energy secure future.